So we're about to break the vacuum officially and we're gonna do a nitrogen purge. Now what this does, nitrogen is a very dry and inert gas. This will help us push that inert gas through the system. So we're gonna come into our top side of our condenser and we've got two places that we can come out in in the evaporator. Now the evaporator is where we're gonna hold our moisture and it's gonna accumulate. So the first thing we're gonna do after we break the vacuum and we get some positive pressure, we're gonna hook up to this drain port. And if we have any standing moisture or, or water in any way, we're gonna see it here. So we're gonna open this first and see what comes out. Honestly, it would be better that we not have actual liquid come out at us because that would mean it's not as severe as it could be. But if we do have some actual liquid come out, well, that just kind of helps us indicate what, what we're dealing with here. But then part of what we'll do is we're going to use that port as part of our purging process. So we're going to, as we push in through the condenser, it's going to push back through the system and then out of a low point where the moisture would be trying to accumulate. So we can try to take that dry nitrogen, let it get those moisture molecules and help it push out of the system. We'll probably do this for around four hours or so total and we'll just cycle tanks. Now this isn't like a constant running stream. You, you, all you need is a very gentle, easy flow. So you maximize the use of the nitrogen, but you still get the uh, moisture wicking effect that the nitrogen will have. So we are at two PSI. From there, let's get this other valve opened up. So what I'm looking for is, do we have any kind of water or moisture? I'm gonna slowly open this so that I don't uh, push too much flow through it. Okay, so I've got some flow. I don't have anything standing. All right, so this is good. So that tells me I don't have actual standing liquid. I do see a little bit of Oil, is that oil or water? Let's see. All right, so that's oil. There's a tiny amount of oil in the bottom of the EVAP. I'm not worried about that. So this is good news. That means we don't have, you know, a dramatic situation where we've got a ton of moisture. So I'm gonna let this bleed that down to neutralize. We're gonna open that valve up full port. Then we will uh, open our ball valve there for the nitro and we'll start the purging process. All right, so we've equalized. We're gonna start cracking it there. I'll come down here. We've got a pretty good little trickle now. I would say probably about half the valve. Yep. Now right now I'm pushing about 400 PSI to the port, but you can see we're just maybe a quarter of the way cracked or so. I can get focus here. There we go. You see we got a quarter of the way cracked. So it doesn't take a whole lot of flow, especially when we're pushing that much in. We've got a steady volume coming out, but it's not like gushing out per se. So this will do a lot. Whatever moisture, most of it should be accumulated in the bottom of the barrel here. And it's not like standing water. It's just gonna be pockets of droplets and such. So what we're trying to help do is just, we're gonna run all this nitro through that air movement through there, or the nitrogen movement, is gonna help just accumulate that water. It's, it's just gonna grab it as it moves. Here in a, a few hours, we'll get this back on vacuum, and we do another solid vacuum with it. If we need to, we'll leave it on vacuum over the weekend and just really dehydrate this system. What I don't wanna do is I don't wanna put refrigerant back in here with a heavy moisture load like that and only further contaminate that refrigerant the refrigerant we have, we've already recovered. It's gonna need a lot of cleaning and a lot of processing in order to get it back to a usable state to begin with. So the more we can clean this chiller, the faster we speed that process up, the cleaner of a job we end up doing, the better service we provide. Got a CVA centrifugal chiller behind me and we're doing some vacuum testing. And this machine has some major leaks we get, did a lot of leak repairs and we've been pulling a vacuum as such. Now we've had a couple of different issues, but ultimately we got the vacuum to pull down to 380 microns. But within a couple of hours of isolating, 
we were able to see that micron rise up to about, uh, I think it was about a thousand microns within three to four hours, and it was still going. Now this is a low pressure machine, and that means that it runs in a vacuum to begin with, so we need to make sure it's got a really tight seal to eliminate any kind of moisture getting into the system. So we ended up letting it sit overnight, and overnight it rose up to 2,000 microns and flatline. Now the reason I did that, I let it sit overnight, because your initial thought would be, okay, we've passed the pressure test, we held pressure for almost a full week, now why did I pull a vacuum and all of a sudden I've got this rise? It doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, something that happened during the leak testing process while we were trying to fix the machine, the isolation valve on the chill water side did end up opening, which allowed chill water from the plant and the other chillers that are running to run through the evaporator while it had atmosphere inside of it, which allowed condensation to likely form inside. You combine that with this machine was having a major atmosphere issue before we took it down, which being a low pressure machine means it's taking in and it already had a lot of standing atmosphere and moisture that was allowed to accumulate in the chiller. So the point of the overnight test, and the reason why I left it yesterday, and I wanted to see what did the microns look like when I came back in, is I had to verify, am I dealing with a leak or am I actually dealing with moisture? Because my gut said it was moisture, but it was possible that it could be a leak. Now, a third condition that can happen on a, on a system with a lot of oil, like this one does, is you can have to draw a lot of the refrigerant out of the oil and, and you'll notice that you can go up to the compressor or the oil separator, whatever it is, you hit it, you see a sudden spike in your microns because that jarring of the oil helped it release those refrigerant molecules from it. But in this particular case and the way this machine works, that wasn't going to be a primary concern. So that left me with, I'm either dealing with moisture or I'm dealing with a leak. Being the fact that I stopped at 2,000 microns, which is kind of a breakover point when you're pulling a lot of vacuums. See, water, and you can look this up through Dan Foss's uh, refrigerant app or uh, ref app, whatever it is, and you can look up the water's R number and see what water is boiling at when it's in a vacuum. Through that, you can also use a converter in Google to calculate what your vacuum is. So ultimately, I was pulled down to negative 14.8 PSIG, which was reflecting that 300 or so micron. Water at that state is going to boil at about 18 degrees. So I've got a mechanical room that is roughly 80 inside of it, and I have no water flowing through the machine during this time. So that water has a high deferential, which means it's going to boil very quickly, especially if there's a substantial amount, which I'm thinking that there is. But as we come up in our micron level, the water's boiling temperature is gonna rise back up and that deferential is gonna dramatically reduce. So I was expecting that at about 2000 microns, I was gonna see a hard flat line, it's pretty typical. And I knew that I shouldn't actually really rise above five to 15,000 microns, just based off of you know, how much I expected to boil off. Now, I was able to do the calculation and water to boil at about 85 degrees means that it's going to be at a micron level of at about 30,000 microns. So I knew that if I rose above 30,000 microns at all, then I had exceeded the water's boiling point and I had to have a major leak or something somewhere that was allowing atmosphere in and messing up my vacuum. Coming back to the overnight test, we stopped at 2000. That's the test I needed to verify. It's had about 12 hours now of just sitting in the vacuum to see where it flatlined at. When we left yesterday afternoon, at the end of the day, we were at 1100 microns. So we gained about another thousand microns or I think it was 900 microns overnight, which is fantastic. This is good news, it means I'm not dealing with a leak issue. It's confirmed for me that I have a tight system, but it also confirms that I have a wet system that I need to dry out. Now these principles apply to any system. This is not just for centrifugals. This is just when you're do dealing with a vacuum that has moisture. This is a, just a larger scale example, but if you had just a regular split system or an RTU or something of that nature, this same type of testing will give you the same results you're looking for 
and being able to do a standing uh, vacuum test in order to confirm where it is. Now, refrigerant is gonna cause a little bit of a different symptom and keep that in mind. You know, this is treating for moisture. On smaller systems, we do commonly deal with refrigerant releasing from the oil and that will uh, give a slightly different result, but it won't be dramatically different. Hope this video helps. Y'all have a good one. MTT, take care of yourselves, take care of your family. I'll catch you around.